hello guys uh, welcome back to my channel as on african motives uh, still working on engineering science and three so in this case uh, we have uh, a question which is on friction uh, which was actually from the question paper it was uh, actually july 2019 so we want to see how this question guys we can uh, actually attempt this so the major part that made me to make this class guys is because of this question here which is on question 4.2 and uh, this question i'm worried about these six marks here that is why i had to make uh, this class so that at least we can know something about this type of a question all right so that's it guys if you are new to my channel you can consider subscribing so that you won't miss any of the classes that we shall be having from Amazon african motives uh, working on engineering science entry so let us uh, quickly rush through the question. Uh, since we are focusing on this question, uh, doesn't mean that we are not going to focus on the other questions. We have to answer them also. So the first question was to name four principles of kinetic energy. All right. So if you uh, have been watching part of our classes, guys, you uh, understand or you agree with me about these principles that we talked about them, which is the principles of kinetic energy. Okay. So kinetic energy, it is dependent on the nature of the surfaces in contact uh, the kinetic energy also is independent of the slip speed the same kinetic energy is independent of the size of area of the area in contact and the same kinetic energy is proportional to the perpendicular force between the what between the surfaces so that is uh, uh, the principles that you can actually give uh, on that question all right then on 4.2 now, which is the part that I want us to focus on, we are given that an object is pushed upwards against a slope. Take note there. There is an object which is pushed upwards against a slope by a pushing force P, which forms an angle of 15 degrees. Okay, the pushing force is the one which made an angle of 15 degrees the pushing force all right the object weighs 500 newton and the slope forms an angle that the, the slope take note we've got the force the slope also makes its own angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal the coefficient of friction between the surfaces in contact is 0,2 all right, so the first question was calculate the mass of what? The mass of the object. So the mass of the object has nothing to do with the, this part. We just need to take it what from the, the object weighs 500 newtons. So this one is direct. Guys, we can uh, actually do this question. So let's just uh, do this and move on to the other part that I want to explain much about. All right, so on 4.21 there, we want the mass and we are given uh, the weight component there, which is 500 newtons. So from this weight, we know that weight is equivalent to mg. All right, so 500 is equivalent to the mass that you want to calculate by mg. So it's mass times g, which is 9,8 there. So we can divide by 9,8, guys, by 9,8 there. So which means our mass is going to be something like um, 51.02 kgs all right so this is the mass of which okay we do not have a condition where we are going to apply this anyways okay let's just take this and move on to the question now which is the important question that we actually want to see the smallest force needed to push on 4.22 the smallest force p needed to push the object upwards how can we push this object upwards guys okay let's see what is happening here uh we have a condition like this uh this is this is it guys let me show you what's happening here i remember there is a slope which which is which makes an angle with the horizontal okay then this slope like this uh definitely that's where an object that you're talking about lies it's going upwards so this is the object which has got 500 newtons uh, or you can write the mass depending with what you want to write. So in this case, I'm going to use the weight. Okay, so this is the horizontal, guys. That's the horizontal line as we know. So we are given that this object, or I mean this slope that we are talking about, the object weighs 500 and the slope forms the slope. The slope, guys, we are referring to this. 
this is the one which makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal so that is where we've got an angle of 20 degrees okay but there is this force p p the one that you want to calculate which is pushing the one that is pushing the object upwards and forms an angle 15 it is pushing this object upwards so this object is going up it is pushing which means it is making it to go up okay so what is going to happen we are going to have p like this because it's supposed to push this so i'm going to write my p like this because it's going to formulate an angle there so how am i gonna put this let me put it like this because it's formulating an angle and it's pushing the object so i'm gonna just put it like this okay so this is my p which is pushing the object upwards so it's supposed to be like this because it's pushing all right so this is my p and it makes an angle here so it's going to make an angle here of 15 degrees okay is it 15 degrees or it's what okay that's 15 degrees the angle that is made here is 15 degrees all right so you've got uh, 15 degrees in this case like this all right so as you can know that when once there is a force and there is an angle between the force and we are going to have the vertical part and the horizontal part of that force so which means here we are going to have since this is vertical you are going to have 90 degrees as you can see this is opposite to p so you are going to have p sin what p sin that or p sin 15 sorry p sin 15 degrees and on this horizontal we shall have p cos uh, 15 degrees remember from your forces guys vertical component horizontal component we take this from your forces still it applies here so this is pushing so this is supposed to at least face this side the arrow is facing this side because you are pushing like this it's going this way so this arrow is supposed to point that way but this is the horizontal component here according to this force p these are the resultant uh, horizontal and vertical okay i think we take note guys if you still have a ch challenges here please make sure that you watch classes on forces okay we talked about horizontal component vertical component uh when you are given a force and a certain angle in between all right but that's the concept there all right then for you to understand this question guys you are going to shift this angle so that you can actually answer it in a better way since here there is um uh you will see that okay let me present this are you seeing that the object is going upwards because it's being pushed to go upwards so this is the normal way of the object but we know that as the object is going upwards definitely there is going to be something which opposes this force is not opposing but it's helping the object to go upwards so the one that is going to oppose the object is the frictional force so we shall have a frictional force here as we know that frictional force always opposes the object all right then the last thing since this we have got the horizontal the, as you can see this is like it corres this frictional it corresponds with this one because this is the one that is going this side so it's opposing this p cos 15 because it's going down p cos 15 p cos 15 is going this side but the frictional is going this direction so the frictional force is opposing p cos 15 degrees all right i hope you understand what i'm saying anyways so you're going to transform this angle to this point here like this uh, i hope it's gonna make sense so let me just put it like this um let me put it this way this is going to be like my resultant here just like p this is going to be my resultant all right something like this is gonna make sense then now um, i'm gonna shift this angle to this point like this um okay i'll explain why am i doing this why am i actually doing this all right so this is it guys something like this okay i want i didn't want it to be so big anyways this is what happened so uh i want you to see something i shifted this angle of 20 degrees to this point so that it can match the same thing as this part here so that we can have 
something which is in the vertical, something which is also in the vertical, something in the horizontal, something also in the horizontal, so that we know which ones are we having uh, that are opposing and so forth. So this part here, yes, because we are going to have a 90 degrees here. As we can see, this is a vertical line and a horizontal line. But now, guys, take note. Please take note, guys. This, according to this angle here, yes, it's in the horizontal. I want you to see this. Yes, it's in the horizontal. But it's no longer going to do the same thing as what we did to say P cos this angle. Because this angle is, this side that you want to calculate, it's opposite to the angle of 20 degrees. So from your forces, just like this, this angle, which was opposite to 15, de to 15 degrees, was written with sine. So this one is going to be having sine. So this is, but our P now is this 500, which is the weight component of what? Of the object. So it's going to be 500 sine 20 degrees. Take note, guys. It's horizontal, yes, but it's opposite to the angle. You transform, you took this just like this. This is the side that you took, and this is now your side. This was the horizontal, but this is now on this side. So as you can see, just like on this, where you've got the adjacent post, this is the adjacent. When you have, okay, for you to not to, maybe you forgot this easier. You can just use, um, I'm now baking, I'm now going back to forces where I really didn't want to go back to. Uh, from your soccer tower here, also from your mathematics. This is what you have from your mathematics, all right? So anything that is opposite and hypotenuse, opposite and hypotenuse, that's your sign. Adjacent and hypotenuse, that's your cos. So as we can see, guys, here, according to 20, this is the opposite. So it has got something to do with opposite. That's why we have to use sign, okay? This is the adjacent here because it, we've got angle of 20 and 90 degrees. On, so it is the adjacent. So we, if it is adjacent, there's no way we can use sine, guys, because there is an adjacent there. So that's why we have to take cos because it is, it is the adjacent. So this one is going to be 500 cos 20 degrees. So this opposite, guys, this opposite thing that we are taking about, please mind this thing. Please mind is don't uh, fight again at this part. Uh, anything that is opposite, just like what we had here, this part, this side is opposite to 15. That is why it has to carry sign because it's only sign which is opposite and the hypotenuse. This one carries cos. That is, it carries the adjacent. That is why you have to write cos because this side is adjacent. So are you seeing that? So this is the same thing. This is your adjacent. That is why it is cos now. This is your opposite. According to fifth to twenty degrees, this is your opposite. That is why it now is sine. All right. And we were given uh, the coefficient of friction, which was zero comma two. This is part of our information, like this. All right. Now our diagram is there. Let's try to calculate now the value of the unknown force, which is P. Well, that is the question. The question is. Calculate the smallest force P needed to push the object upwards. All right. So where are we going to have this? All right. We know that um, the weight, uh, I mean, the from the coefficient of friction, because there we can't have anything that we can uh, formulate. We do not have any part that you can formulate any equation here, guys. But we are going to take advantage of this. Always, you are going to take advantage of this coefficient of friction. Why? Because you know that the coefficient of friction is equivalent to the frictional force over actually there now is uh, we are supposed to be like we are working with the fc which is the perpendicular component isn't it guys we're supposed to work with the perpendicular component there which is fc which is actually some can just write this as the normal uh, weight component that is uh, something like that but what do we have here Okay, we are going to see this in the calculations because we have to find these ones. All right. Now, let's go back to the diagram, guys, so that we can formulate these uh, components. Uh, in order for us to obtain the frictional force there, in order for us to have this, because we need an expression for that frictional force. 
this frictional force guys is actually something which is affecting the part that is in the horizontal but these are parallel it's like this like uh because we have got this part here and this part here, which is all but these are parallel components as you can see this part here is parallel to the plane this f is parallel it's also parallel to this side and it's also parallel to this side we are talking uh, maybe it's according to my diagram that's why this seems like but these are parallel like we are talking about the ones which are parallel so these are the ones that you are referring to at the moment okay so these ones which are parallel this is going upwards because it is pushing this one is going upwards all right so it's going to be p cos uh, 15 degrees which is going upwards all right then because this is going upwards we are going to see that this one it is going this direction it's going downwards and this one is also going down which means these two they are opposing these two they are opposing so they can be written on the other side because these two they are opposing all right so if these two are opposing we are going to subtract actually we are supposed to like write them on the other side to okay let's just do this guys uh is equal to we write them on the other side so that we don't confuse someone because these two are opposing so i'm going to add them on the other side which is the frictional force plus 500 sine 20 which is this one all right so we've got 500 sine 20 degrees which are opposing but what i need is to find an expression for this which is the frictional force so which means i have to make the frictional force the subject here all right so let's make this the, be the subject so we're going to transpose this is going to subtract okay so our frictional force is going to be p cos 15 degrees since this is on the other side is now minus 500 sine 20 degrees so this is what you're going to have as the frictional force in terms of p so this is like an expression yeah just like an expression guys all right so we just leave it like this um just leave it we are going to talk about this later on so i'm just going to put it aside we now have our frictional okay we move on to the horizontal components the horizontal components this time are the ones now which we, we are talking about the ones which are perpendicular now to the plane these were parallel to the plane these ones so which ones are perpendicular you see that this one is perpendicular because it's going this way when it reaches the horizontal like this it's going to be at 90 degrees so we are talking about p sine 15 and this one or 500 cos 20 but i want you to see what is happening between these two are you seeing that these two they are going they are all facing downwards so which means they are in the same region so you're just going to add them these ones the other was going this way the other was going this way and we added to these ones which were going the same direction which are in the same direction you add them together so it's the same thing these two they are in the same direction so you just combine them together all right so that will be your fc or your w there all right so my fc in this case i'm just going to combine these ones which are perpendicular that's p sine 15 so i'm going to add p sine 15 degrees plus another one which is perpendicular which is goes down on this one which is 500 cos 20 so i have got 500 cos 20 degrees all right now i have my fc or weight component which is i mean the w there which is uh, now the normal force and actually we are referring to the normal one so i'm going to now substitute into the formula which formula am i talking about remember we wrote this formula here we wrote this formula here that since we are given the coefficient of friction so i'm going to substitute now 
so the coefficient of friction is given what was the coefficient of friction it was zero comma what let's go back let's go back to the question paper here this is zero comma two the coefficient of friction between is zero comma two so zero comma two is equal to this all right so you're going to formulate an equation there so zero comma two is equal to the frictional force all right so you need the frictional force the one that we calculated in terms of what in terms of p okay which is this part sorry i hope it didn't affect that's your frictional force here so you're going to write this okay so you've got p cos 15 degrees minus 500 uh, sign 20 degrees so this question they can ask it anytime guys you must be able to answer this question all right so you've got your frictional force over the normal force or the horizontal component which is p sine this one okay so you're going to write as it is so this one is p sine 15 degrees plus 500 cos 20 degrees all right by this you are actually done guys now it's a matter of solving for p so let's formulate an equation 0 comma 2 is equal to so what i want you to do is to just use your calculator there to simplify cos 15 so cos 15 from your calculator you just put maybe three decimal places okay so for me i got something like 0 comma 9 uh, 6 6 but there's a p yeah so it's 0 comma 9 6 6 p okay simplify from your calculator minus 500 sine 20 which is going to give you minus 171 comma 010 like this everything over p sine 15 okay sine 15 is going to give us 0 comma 9 is it 0 comma 9 something there so you're supposed to obtain something like 0 comma 259 to p okay to three decimal places 0 comma 259 i'm just going i'm just using two decimal places throughout okay then 500 cost 20 plus 500 cost 20 to three decimal places is going to give you something like 469,864. 8, why is this guy rushing all right this is what you're going to have then so what i'm going to do is to actually cross multiply here because you have to find the value for p so back to your mathematics guys you cross multiply this and this so remember 0 comma 2 is going to multiply this and it's going to also multiply this take note about this one so let's multiply 0 comma 2 times 0 comma 5259 p you're going to obtain something like 0 comma uh, 0518 p all right 0 comma 2 times this you're going to obtain plus nine three comma nine six nine two all right which is equal to one you cross multiply so it's one times this which is zero comma nine six six p one times this is going to remain as it is one seven one comma zero one zero or you can just write since we are just writing to three days more place so make sure that you choose Maybe you can choose two decimal places, depend with you, but that's what you're going to have. But these ones, after multiplying them, they are now giving us four decimals. Just leave them like that. Okay, it's fine. So the next thing definitely is to collect like terms. The terms with P to one side of the equation and um, the constants to one side of the equation. Okay, so I'm going to leave this because this one is a smaller value. So I'm going to transpose it to the right hand side. So I'm going to leave this 93,9692. All right, transpose this minus to this one. It's going to be positive. I need I need to change a marker here and have the blue or green or red so that it can make sense because now there are so many values here. Okay, anyways, this is what you're going to have. Then already this is on the right hand side, which is 0, 0,966p. Transpose this, it's going to be a minus on that side, so it's going to be 0, 0,0. 518p something like that all right so guys collect like terms definitely you have collected like terms so you can combine this or you can just combine while you are transposing you'll be combining so you're going to obtain two four 
not two four but two six four comma nine seven nine two something like that which is equal to you combine these two you obtain zero comma nine one four two p all right so there's a p there then you divide both sides definitely divide both sides divide both sides so therefore my p is going to be two eight nine comma eight four eight newtons so this is the result in p which is a force which is in newtons so as you can see guys that was the struggle that was the struggle there to obtain this value um which is uh, something else so maybe we can have another question in any of the classes that we shall have later on uh so that maybe you can relate to this to this one uh like if we have maybe two or three questions like this yeah you can actually understand what's happening there because they can actually ask this question so i'm going to show you uh, from question papers and also from a textbooks uh, also from the textbook uh, that i'm using yeah this type of a question is there i'm gonna do that uh, so that we'll see but as you saw that it was important for you to have this because you are given the coefficient of friction and there's no way we have to apply this uh, coefficient of friction so there was no way we had to determine the frictional force and we had to determine uh, the horizontal component which is actually the normal force that you're going to to use but these ones are the ones which are parallel so that that is why we ended up with something like that okay so that's it guys then the last question give two applications of the angle of the angle of repose okay two applications of the angle of repose which applications are you talking about here so let's quickly take these ones guys as we can see we have been working a lot guys so this one is simply the last part the applications of the angle of repose okay we can use this in in the design of charts that is um, in silos or convey grain yeah these ones yeah those who are, who are in industry yeah who've been working in industry and actually understand this okay in the design of scopes and uh, for power shovels and uh, in the design of railroad carriages that transport iron ore okay so you can actually memorize these uh, or find a way of knowing them because they can ask you these uh, typical uh, questions so theory actually it's a matter of uh, yeah re-reading and re-read yeah read and read again uh, that's theory yeah theory calculations it's calculate and calculate again so that's it guys from Amazon African motives working on engineering science and three uh, question papers and uh, revisions till we meet again